Meeting of a finance committee meeting of Thursday, June 12, 2008. Call to order. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Let's uh, say the invocation and the pledge. We'll say the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. For it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, all members present except for Councilman uh, Thompson. Thank you. And, I'm sorry, and Councilman Ken Shakesider. Uh, no chairs, additions. Anyone, public comment? Anyone wishing to speak? Next week. All right, our next agenda item is uh, IT cost savings initiatives. I wanted to bring, uh, you know, anytime we have some, some kind of cost savings to the parish or uh, we certainly want to bring those up and, and bring those um, before the Finance Committee to show citizens that we're, we are saving, uh, saving money. And uh, information technology is, you know, something that is near and dear to my heart as being full-time in my other job. Uh, and so I was excited to learn about some of the things going on in the parish, and I've asked um, uh, the IT manager, Brandon O'Day, uh, to come and, and bring uh, those forward. So, Brandon. Thank you, Councilman Lohr. Good evening, committee members, uh, Chairman Lohr. My name is Brandon O'Day. I've been your technology manager uh, since February of this year. And I'm going to be going over some cost-saving initiatives that uh, my technology department's been working on since I've uh, taken this position. If you can look at this sheet here. First item is using state standard PC configurations. Uh, whenever I arrived, um, the parish was paying approximately $1,300 for desktop computers and uh, $1,589 for laptop computers. Um, at my previous place of employment, we were getting um, better prices than this. We were getting, I guess, the state and federal price. So I, I made a phone call to, uh, to Dell, uh, spoke with some of their finance people to see if we could get some of the same pricing, and um, they were acceptable to the, the numbers that I was asking for. So the new numbers... Uh, for a desktop, a Dell desktop computer is $971, and a laptop is $1,269. M moving on to the next item, uh, using Microsoft Volume Licensing for all Microsoft software purchases. Previously, we were just paying the OEM price for um, Microsoft software. An example is the Office 2007 suite. We were paying $310 uh, per license. The new um, volume license cost is $240.34. And uh, underneath that, you'll note, um, say for the next 50 PCs that the parish purchases this year, uh, the new pricing will yield a savings of approximately $16,000 in hardware and $3,500 in software. Going down to future migration from Oracle to SQL, this is our back-end database system. Um, currently, we're using Oracle. and um, each license for Oracle costs $7,254. Um, I'm we're in the process of moving to SQL, which is a Microsoft product, and the license costs for those are $3,749. Um, so not only will we have that that cost savings move into SQL, but we're also going to have it, it's going to affect some of the other systems that we have that use the database uh, that use the or current Oracle database, such as Laserfish. And Laserfish is our document imaging system. Um, we're going to save $1,800 a year in maintenance costs because we're using the the cheaper of the two uh, database systems. Brandon, if I could interrupt you for just a sec, mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Bell, I believe you had a, a question. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah, you, you guys stop me. I'm just going to roll through this. Okay. The next item, using in-house talent rather than outsourcing or just throwing money at a problem. And I've got two, two good examples here of um, things that we've done internally to try to save some money. Uh, we have a, a large 42-inch scanner. 
Um, whenever it was bought new many years ago, it was ten thousand dollars. It's it's three years out of warranty currently. Well, it failed on us, and um, so we had a need to replace or repair this faulty scanner, and we had two solutions. Uh, HP's recommendation, which is the maker of the scanner, uh, was to purchase a new scanner at a discounted cost of eight thousand dollars, or we could uh, have one of our technicians try to break it open and repair it themselves. Uh, John LeBlanc, one of my technical staff members, uh, opened it up and identified the faulty part. Uh, so for $363, we were able to purchase a uh, refurbished power supply, and John successfully uh, installed it, and it's back up and running again. Example number two, uh, the parish recently moved uh, three employees into the new White House Annex building, which is directly across the parking lot from the White House. Um, IT had the, the task of figuring out how we could get a network presence uh, in that building. And um, the, solu the, the two solutions that we had, one was to contract out to a technology company to come in and create a point-to-point -point wireless network between the two buildings. Uh, or we could try to do it ourselves, but we, we had no experience in doing it. Uh, so we, we went ahead and got the equipment in in time, and uh, Trent Woodard uh, and the maintenance department were able to, to figure out how to do it themselves and they were able to successfully in configure and install the equipment. So for less than a thousand dollars we were able to buy the equipment and, and get it up and running. Next item, uh, cutting the LSU GIS contract by 90 percent. The parish has been uh, in a contract with LSU for many years. I think the contract uh, is approximately a hundred thousand dollars total for, for, for the project, I mean for the, I'm sorry, for the contract. Um, 90,000 of it was paying for four students from LSU to come here and work for the entire year and their job was basically to update the um, the web maps and to uh, I guess build our GIS system or to help us build the GIS system um, and if you go on to the next page I have the, the, the reason why we're doing this we're currently in a transition phase from the cre a creation state of our GIS system into more of a maintenance state um, and now that our, our, our GIS staff are knowledgeable and experienced enough in, in GIS now, we no longer see the need um, for the LSU students to c continue working with us. The other 10% of that, uh, approximately $10,000 a year, we're paying for, um, we kind of have a, an in-house uh, LSU professor that comes to us and works with our GIS guys and uh, makes sure that they're trained in the latest and greatest uh, GIS technologies that, that, that are out there. We'd like to continue uh, his services. Next item, using grant money to replace old server equipment. Um, currently, our data capacity for the entire parish is 4.2 terabytes. Um, using this grant money, we're going to be able to almost double it to 8 terabytes. And uh, this is important because um, as more and more offices move from a, a paper environment where you just have file cabinets everywhere and file, file rooms, <coughs> Um, we're trying to push for the parish to start scanning these items, getting them into a digital format where they're safe and secure and we have them backed up. Um, so whenever you scan these, these, these documents, you, you need the capacity, you need the additional space for that. So um, that's why we're looking to expand our, our storage capacity. Next item, discontinued support for HR software. Um, we've been paying uh, support costs for HR software that was never it was never installed. It was bought maybe two or three years ago, um, and we've been paying fourteen fourteen thirty nine a year uh, for the tech support for the software, but it's we're not using it. So when it came across my desk, uh, I, I contacted the the previous HR director and we discussed it. And he, he didn't have any plans for implementing it anytime soon, so we went ahead and, and killed the support. Next item, encouraging the rest of the parish to take advantage of laser fish. And I already touched on this a little bit. Um, la laser fish is costing the parish approximately $10,000 a year for support. And uh, it, it's, it's a high number, but it's also, it, it's a nice big system and it's easy to use. And uh, the problem with it was we only had maybe three or four departments that were actually taking advantage of it. And our whole IT staff has been pushing for the rest of the parish to start taking advantage of it. And we've got uh, the grants department and uh, the finance department next up to begin using the system. Next item, leveraging CompuTrace to recover lost or stolen computer equipment. 
um, CompuTrace is, is, is fairly new to the IT world. Um, what it basically is is software that runs on your laptop and your desktop computers. Um, it runs quietly. No one, no one knows it's there, basically. Um, but what it does is if, if someone's laptop or desktop is ever reported stolen, we contact the CompuTrace company. We give them the serial number of the laptop that, that's been reported missing or stolen. And they then activate uh, the software that's built into, in, into the laptop, and it begins calling in to their call center every hour. And it, it, whenever it calls in, it registers the location of the laptop. Um, and once, that, once they have that information, they hand it off to their investigative department, and they begin working with local law enforcement to try to recover the, the laptop. And um, they're, you know, they're experienced in you know, getting subpoenas and whatever it takes to get the equipment back. My previous job, we, uh, we used it a lot. Um, the Recovery School District for New Orleans, after Katrina, we, we go and we buy these, uh, uh, bought thousands and thousands of computers and laptops and start ha handing them out to teachers and staff members. At the end of the year, we only got about 80 percent of the equipment back and were able to leverage CompuTrace to, to go out and uh, recover the equipment for us. And the cost of that, I, f I failed to put the cost on there. It's, it's approximately $54 uh, a computer, so it's, it, it's, uh, I think the benefit outweighs the cost. Next item, avoid, avoid expensive IT training that involves travel and time away from work. Um, specialized IT training is, is costly. Um, I mentioned earlier we're working on moving from Oracle database system to SQL database system. Um, to get my database administrator formally trained in SQL was going to cost about $8,000 to send him to a class in either Baton Rouge or New Orleans. Um, but uh, af after talking with the individual, um, his name's VJ, we were able to, uh, uh, to go and purchase the, uh, a training book locally, and he is self-training himself. So uh, I, I understand that this, it, it doesn't always work this way. You have, to have, you have to have good people who want to be able to do this on their own and go and buy the book and train themselves. And uh, we're able to take advantage of it in this case, and I'm hoping we can do it more in the future. Uh, we have any questions before I move on to security? Good. Okay. All right, so a couple of just security uh, changes that we made since, uh, since I've been here. Uh, President Martinez requested the following items be performed, and we were able to see them through. Uh, the first one, uh, to enable the prompt users to accept connections on all remote control services. So basically whenever someone in the parish uh, government system has a problem with their computer, they send an email to our support account. Uh, we get it, and one of our technicians begins to try to remotely work on their uh, on their problem. And uh, whenever, whenever we initiate this remote session, uh, previously um, we could just initiate a remote session on anyone's computer and they didn't really know about it. Um, so now this is kind of an added la layer of security for the end user that says, hey, is it okay if, if Brandon O'Day takes over your computer and begins working on it? They have to uh, say accept and, and we, we begin to fix the problem. And the next item is to create separate user accounts for our VPN connections. Uh, VPN is used, stands for virtual private networking. It's used by anyone that is outside of our network that needs access to a resource inside of our network. Um, a good example is uh, one of our GIS contractors. Uh, he needs access into some of our GIS systems, and to securely do that, we ask, we ask that he use this VPN connection. Well, previously, we had a number of people using VPN, and they were, only, they were all using a single ID and password. And the problem with that, it kind of brings up a, a security flag. If one of your systems becomes compromised or something goes wrong, you have no way of narrowing down who was using it if they're all using the same ID and password. So now we have everyone using their own ID and password. And uh, I'm going to move on to a project example. Um, SharePoint portal services for parish government. Um, SharePoint, the, the basic need for this, and whenever I first started, I had a number of departments coming to me and saying, Brandon, can we get some type of collaboration uh, file sharing system where everyone in my office can, can share a document, check out a document, uh, uh, have multiple versions of a document, um, and then I've, I've had uh, Chris and Pat come to me also saying, is there any way we can get rid of some of this paper that, that we have? All, you know, these agendas have so much paper. And I, th I think SharePoint is our best, uh, our best solution. 
So we, we've begun the process to, uh, to create a SharePoint project uh, to bring SharePoint uh, in, or to install it for the entire parish. And w what it's basically going to do is allow um, a de department to share data within themselves, to share data between departments, the ability for upper management to see a, a high-level dashboard view of the entire parish, and the ability for um, the council and any committees or commissions uh, that want to have some type of workflow-enabled paperless agenda in place. Uh, next on moving to cost, um, I'm, I'm happy that we're able to um, utilize some grant money uh, to provide the hardware and software, so that's not going to cost us anything. Um, it's, it's not going to cost us any tax dollars anyway. So uh, moving down to implementation, um, we could hire a contractor to come in and, and do this for us, uh, approximately $20,000 uh, for them to implement it. Um, I think we can do this ourselves, uh, with one exception. Um, the hardest part to this, and it's probably what we lack the most experience in, is understanding how each of the offices work, their workflow processes. Each office is, is unique, and what we're going to do is ask uh, uh, is ask uh, Sparkhound, uh, which is a Baton Rouge technology company, to come in, and um, we're going to. Um, engage with them for uh, a $3,000 contract. They're going to come in and provide uh, the interview. Uh, they're going to conduct the interviews and they're going to uh, take the needed notes uh, from each department and then provide us with an implementation document. We're then going to take the document and my tech guys are going to go and implement the SharePoint system for, for the parish and for any of the committees and um, commissions that wish to use it. And let's see. Tommy wanted me to mention about two other projects that we're working on. Let me bring those up. One of them is basic computer training for all supervisors. Um, we currently have a, a vendor that provides its basic online computer training. Uh, the, the training that we're looking at for all the supervisors in the parish is called Windows XP Essentials, and it's, it's basic ins and outs of using a, a Windows computer. Um, so we're going to be able to utilize uh, um, this contract that we have with lynda.com to be able to uh, use this training for our, our parish supervisors. It's also going to be optional, too, for any non-supervisors that want to use the system. And the last, uh, last project that I wanted to talk about was um, a work order system for the parish. Currently, uh, Mr. Bob's team over at DPW are using a product called Cartograph. Uh, we're looking at it and uh, other options as well, but uh, the goal here is to implement a work order system that the entire parish can use. Uh, DPW has been successful using Cartograph, uh, so we might be asking that a third party come in and kind of do the same thing that we were asking for with the SharePoint project to do a needs assessment for us to see what training is needed for our people, do we need to buy any additional software or hardware to implement this for the entire parish? And um, one final note, um, Kim, Cedric, and, and, uh, and Tommy have all made it clear to me that this administration wants to make uh, technology a, a top priority. We want to advance the technology for the parish. And uh, myself and my technology team are, are thrilled to hear this, and we're looking forward to meeting these challenges uh, in, in the future. Well, thanks, Brandon. Just going through, uh, adding up some of the costs real quick in terms of hard savings, right off the bat, it's, it was around $150,000 just on the items you were talking about. Yeah. And um, that's not even counting, like you were saying, the, um, you know, the return on investment from, from the, new, the new project you're going to be doing and leveraging what was there already existing to its fullest potential. I mean, that's how business is successful, is in you know, utilizing technology to maximize efficiencies and cut out waste, and, and parish government's no different. So I'm, I'm Absolutely. thrilled that you guys are doing this, and uh, <laughs> thanks for coming to chair. And any other questions? Uh, Councilman Bell. Brandon? Yes, sir. You've had a busy four months. I commend you for your efforts. Thank uh, you. Quite a savings uh, to the parish, and uh, I know you have many other plans. Uh, Getting to the spark hound, uh, how close are we to actually we, we, implementing? We, sure, we, we had the kickoff meeting with them today. Uh, okay. They they came and did the interview with with my group, and um, we they asked some basic questions that they're going to use to put together that document. And uh, I think the questions were all very valid, and 
Um, she has what she needs from us, and now uh, I've got to schedule with the other directors of the different departments as well as you guys. If you guys want to use the system, uh, schedule a meeting where she can sit down with myself and you and uh, go over your needs and see what, how we can create a SharePoint system that works for you. Very good. Once again, thank you for your efforts. Sure. <clears throat> Anybody else? Great. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Um, Suzanne, please make note that uh, Councilman Shecksnyder has arrived. Thank you. Next item is uh, review of Parish Government Millage Act uh, process. Uh, Ms. Gwen LeBlanc, CFO, and Assessor Renee Michel. Good evening, uh, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, tonight, we'd like just to go over the process that the Council goes through to adopt their 2008 millage and also the process to sit as a board of review. The assessor is here tonight and she will also participate in this discussion. Um, the council actually has two functions during this whole process. One is to you have to adopt your millages that you have assessed and then also when we get to the board of review process, the council sits as a board of review to accept the assessment role as prepared by the assessor for the entire parish, all of the taxing districts. So you're kind of acting in the role of, of a judge in, in that process. So we'll go over that and we'll get to it uh, as we go through it. If you, each of you have a booklet before you, uh, if you turn to page one, this is a reassessment year and we'll, we'll get into that also. But if you go down to, towards the bottom of the page, we'll, we'll start with that because we are in a reassessment year. Uh, the legal authority to meet the requirements during this process is Article 7, Section 23C of the Constitution and RS 42-1, that's the Open Meetings Law, and RS 47-1705B, which is the uh, Public Meetings Law. So there's restrictions in all these laws that apply. Uh, Reassessment is mandated by, naturally, Article 7, 6, Section 23C of the Louisiana Constitution, and all properties subject to taxation shall be reappraised and valued at least every four years. Millages are adjusted upward or downward by the assessor, depending on the property values. And adjusted millages, as established by the assessor and approved by the Louisiana uh, uh, Legislative Auditor, is also required. And then once that is accomplished, the assessor will present it to, to us all in all the taxing districts in the parish. At the, the method the council then would go through is you have to adopt it by ordinance at a public meeting. And of course that process involves introduction of ordinances at a public meeting. Then you hold a public hearing and the taxing districts have to follow the public hearing and notice to the public requirements and additional publishing requirements mandated by the Constitution and the revised statutes. And then the, when you get to, after the public hearing, to consideration of adoption of the ordinance, it requires two ordinances, two separate ones. The first ordinance sets forth and designates the adjusted rates as set by the assessor and approved by the legislative auditor, and that requires a ma majority vote of the council. The second ordinance is what we all refer to as rolling forward. It sets forth and designates, it designates the adjusted rates that you've adopted in the first ordinance plus the, um, the adjusted rates and then the, what you want to roll forward to, that's uh, the increased rates that, which is equal to the prior year's maximum. And that adoption of the second ordinance requires a two-thirds vote of the council. And it, if you go to, after page three, to attachment A, this is a this is an example of the ordinances that will be presented to the parish council for their consideration. The, the first ordinance lists just our taxing districts and then the adjusted rate is set by the, the assessor. We do not have that yet, but the assessor has told me she'll get those soon. So, of course, before you introduce the ordinance, you will, that will be filled in. And then the next uh, ordinance is Ordinance 2, and you would repeat the adjusted millage that you just adopted in Ordinance 1, and then you would roll forward to the uh, 
2008 levy. And we'll go through that in a few minutes also. So if you would, the last two pages of the booklet, if you go to that, that's two pie charts. And the, the second to last page, the first pie chart, this is the assessment role for just the parish taxes. And this is based on the 2007, because that's the latest information we have right now. And we, uh, our taxes yielded 15.9 million. And if you go start at the pie, you know, at the top, at the large piece, the library, it'll show you how much the library collected and the percent of the total taxes uh, assessed by the parish council. So the library will receive 29% of that figure. East Ascension drainage, 20%. The green, that's our, our health unit and our mental health uh, units. They would receive 17% of our taxes and parish government, 12%. And the Prairieville Fall, uh, Fire District number three, 5%, I mean 9%, excuse me. And the Council on Aging, 7%. And our, our seven lighting districts combined, 3% and West Ascension Drainage District, 3%. And then the last pie chart will show you the entire parish's taxing districts, which yielded in 2007, 70.5 million. And then starting with the largest piece of the pie, the blue, you can see the school board collects 57% of the total ad valorem taxes collected in our parish. And going around law enforcement, which is the sheriff, 14%. And then our library with 7%, East Ascension Drainage, 4%, and the water, all the water districts and levy districts in our parish, 4%, and then our health and mental health, 4%, parish government, 3%, Prairieville Fire District number three uh, is 2%, and then the parish assessment district, which is the assessor, 2%, and the council on aging, 1%, and then the parishes seven lighting districts, 1%, and then the drainage district, 1%. So if you go back to page uh, two at the bottom, if you skip down to the bottom, this is just for your information. We're listing all the parishes taxing districts for ad valorem taxes and the amount of the 2007 millage and the expiration date on, on each of our tax, uh, uh, ad valorem taxes. And you can see that the uh, parish tax and then the parish tax that, that is assessed inside the city limits of Don Seville and Gonzales is a constitutional tax so you know it's perpetual and then the health unit has an expiration date and then on down the library has two two ad valorem taxes and together they uh, equal 6.8 mils and then our, the, our listing of all our seven lighting districts and then East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District, as you know, it expires this year, 2008. And then the West Ascension uh, Consolidated Gravity Drainage has two also. And together, they equal 10 mils. And then Fire District number three, 10. And then all of our mills are t uh, millages are 10 years except the constitutional millages for the general fund and the 4.67 mils for West Ascension drainage. The one that says 4.67 mils, that's a five-year uh, tax. And just a few facts on page three, an ad valorem means according to value, uh, the taxes are assessed a dollar amount according to the property value. One mil equals one-tenth of a penny in 2007. One mil parish-wide wide yielded 687,000 and in the rural areas only 600,000. All parish taxes, all of our parish taxes are subject to homestead exemption and that's the taxable value of that property uh, equals the fair market value less homestead exemption. That's how you get to the taxable value. Property is assessed in three categories. The first one is real property. That's uh, um, land and immovables. All land is assessed at 10% of fair market value. Residential buildings at 10% and commercial buildings at 
Then the second category is personal property, and that's your movables like equipment, furniture, and inventory. That's assessed at 15% of fair market value. And then the third category is public service property, which is utilities, and that's assessed at 25% of fair market value and is actually assessed by the Louisiana Tax Commission, Commission instead of the local assessors throughout the state. Uh, if you go back to page two in the middle, num uh, Roman numeral number three, that's the process we're going to go through, and the assessor is going to explain that, that as for the council to sit as a board of review. But before we get into that, if you have any questions for the assessor, I, you know, we'd be glad to answer them on the process the parish goes through to adopt their millages. Gwen, I have some comments, actually. If we sure. could turn to the, uh, the last page. Last showing page. the showing the breakdown of the property taxes okay. in this pie chart. I'm just, I'm amazed. I'm trying to, uh, I'm put trying your, to put, uh, put your put your arms around it. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> putting my arms around it, and I'm, I'm shocked here. I mean, so just seeing this for the first time. So, 57% uh, of the total property tax goes to the school uh, the school board basically. For, yes. Uh, it's 40 million dollars. That's right. Law enforcement gets 9.9. .9, that's 14%. So that's 71 percent that's not going to anything even remotely parish government, I guess you yeah. could say. That's because, right. Okay. So that, out of that 29 percent, once you take out things like fire, uh, east ascension drainage, um, uh, what else, council on, on aging, lighting districts, the amount that goes to parish government to fund parish government operations is 3 percent of total property taxes, mm -hmm. which is $1.8 million, which could build, what, half a road, um, a half a mile of road probably? That's right. I mean, that is, that is just mind-blowing to me. That yep. $1.8 million is, is what we're getting off of property taxes. So we are completely dependent on sales tax for everything, which mm -hmm. means recession. Right now you, know. you are. Right now you are. Sure. sure. And, uh, couldn't help but point that out. The danger that, Chris, is sales taxes go with the economy. Right. Whereas property taxes are, you know, it's a lot more, right. lots more, lot more steady. You know that. Yeah. Okay. Any I other just, questions about those amounts? And we've had a tremendous, you know, tremendous growth in property taxes in the last few years. I can't, I've got them in here in front of you. I could, you know, roll them off how much, inc how much increase we've had in the last five years. Great. And we expect to see some more, too, in the next Great. five years. Uh, Councilman Joseph. Councilman Shakespeare, go ahead. I, and, and I just think that's important to note uh, what you were saying, uh, Ms. Muir, is that uh, about the tremendous growth in the property mm -hmm. taxes, which is which is good for the parish, but it's not good for the parish government because it's such a small percentage That's right. that even even though we see all the negatives of the growth because of infrastructure needs and all the planning and all the things that happen, it's incumbent upon the parish to take care of that. We receive no benefit from the standpoint of property from taxes, taxes. That's right. Revenues that would be generated by new people coming in and new that's assessments right. and everything. That's exactly right. And so I think, you know, if if, if, if the general population really has an opportunity to, to really take a look at this and see uh, that, you know, if if something is asked for by the parish government, I mean, we, we are not overly. That's Overly right. Overly funded, the people, right? I, I, I promise you. Understand uh, your frustration. So this is this is very, very, very graphic as to how the money is spent out, and, I, and I, I, I think that's very important for everybody to see. I agree. Uh, about I mean, this. If we could get any assistance from the media, this 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 graph, or maybe we should put this on the website. Yeah, it, on the you know, website. I mean, it's amazing. It, it, it is amazing. In the year. We want we want people to see it because also these other entities that any public buildings that the parish is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep, the expansion, that's right. and everything for them. That's right. That's right. Now, but none that's of your public buildings person. or anything are accessible. You know that. That's all exempt. That's not accessible. But, uh, but yeah, you know, you absolutely do not see the tax dollars, you know, and it is, it, it, you know, it is something for the public to see. You know, it, one, of the, one of the things that we use to, to uh, when we talk to people about their taxes, you know, one of the things I like to say is bring it back to them. It's coming back to services for you. And, you know, so they say, well, where? Well, in your school systems, in your good law enforcement, you know, but you're right. You know, it's not a lot going to parish government as a, as a whole. 
y'all yeah. want to talk about that's good is it any any other yeah. uh, council members? well i'd like to go ahead i have i have one question i was just noticing and i know ACUD, Ascension Consolidated, had passed a, a millage. Yes. And it wasn't on here. If there's it's, any other millage, it's not reported on this report. No. So this is all the millage except ACUD 1. Yeah, they did. But remember, we added it later, and we, that's we why she didn't it. have it in her. That. That's Just why she didn't it. have it. Yes. Right. It's, it's, but, it's definitely there. Absolutely. But, it, but this is all the millage we have. Yes. We forgot to do, put that in, yeah. Any further discussion before Ms. Michelle moves on? Anytime y'all need anything like that, please call me. I have lots of numbers at my office. We keep things like that in my office. You know, we, I have a projection I'm going to do soon, you know, because I just got some new numbers in today with all our 10-year exemption contracts. It brings in a lot of Avalorum taxes that's coming in the next five years, a lot. And, uh, so, you know, but anytime you need any of those numbers, you know, like I said, it, you know, if it's of interest to you, just let us know. It's always at, pretty much at my fingertips. Can I ask before we you get into the process a little further, sure. a general question about uh, mm -hmm. your process and assessing and all uh -huh. that stuff? I mean, I know some of the, um, the other parish instances and stuff, it's been a big deal as far as the timeliness of things, um, getting reassessed and right. keeping that up currently and all right. that stuff. Is Do we have any of those problems here? Or can uh, yeah, we have. I'll be honest with you, when, uh, since I took office in 2003, I've been updating this, this, the assessments in our parish. Um, we were in dire need of updating at that time. Um, I'm, in const I'm constantly doing that. This is, a re this is a residential reassessment year this year, a state-ordered residential reassessment year. And uh, it looks like we've, we're going to recess probably about 8,000 pieces of property, residential. Um, last year and the year before, we, I reassessed uh, commercial property. So that's been done. I feel very good about my commercial property. This is up to date. But my residential property, there are still some, some uh, challenges out there. And it, it really is just a matter of having the time and the, the resources and the money and the people to hire and get it done. But uh, I feel very confident that we're doing better, a much better job at it. Uh, I really got interested in your uh, IT person here talking because I've recently bought um, a lot of different software also where we can start doing this online and you know electronically now instead of by paper and pencil which we've done for years so it's going to be really you know uh, beneficial in the future okay great Thanks. we're getting better and better <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, but you know I really would like to today just to um, um, educate y'all a little bit about sitting as a board of review I know some of the council people that have been here for a long time you know understand that but uh, when that process this is a this is um, the way we get involved together every year, the assessor and the parish council. And, uh, but it's simply just, there's a, um, it's all to do with the appeals process. And what this is is to protect people out there with, with, their, with their assessments when they don't agree with what the assessor has uh, their property value you know, at. They, they have the, um, the process is that they can go to the board of review and the parish council sits as the board of review. Now, there's a lot of dates that are involved in there and that y'all don't have to worry about. No, I keep up with all that. The assessor's responsible for that. And I always keep uh, Gwen and uh, Suzanne informed about those dates. And I will let y'all know when it gets closer also. But you will actually sit as a board of review. After I, I have to open my books for public inspection every year for, for a period of 15 days. This year it's going to be, I think, August 28th to September 15th the 14th. So after that is done, that's the legal time when someone has, has to come to my office and actually uh, find out what their property is assessed for and you know, uh, discuss it with me if they disagree with it. If they disagree with what I've determined, then their next appeal process is to go to the parish board of review. So you actually sit as, as a parish council members for a period of about 10 days where y'all will be um, receiving, if, if, if there is a need to, um, appeals. There's a certain form that the uh, uh, people have to fill out and send it to y'all, but just want y'all to be aware of that's what you know the uh, responsibility of the parish council is at that time. I have all this written down. Gwen's done a very good job with this booklet to tell you how, how it's done. Uh, what I will do if there is a, an appeal, we we communicate closely to, with each other that that whole time, and my office does with your y'all office, and what we make sure and get the information to you as soon as we can. But the property owner is responsible, you know, for getting this information to the parish councilman for their appeals. 
Okay, so uh, that's really what I just wanted to tell you. If you have any questions about that, you know, uh, you know, please don't hesitate to ask. This we've been lucky in the past that we've haven't had a bunch of appeals. You know, uh, none last year, but you know there there is a good chance. You know, there's always a chance of that, and that's the right of every property owner. You know. Questions, Councilman Joseph. Yes, Miss Mayor. Our uh, increase over the years when you've been reassessing the property. Right. How? What is our percentage of increase we've been doing? How have been looking over the last okay. two or three years? We've been going two percent, three percent, or? I can tell you. Let me, let me get my sheet here. Let me see if I got it by percentage. I probably don't have a percentage here because I'm. What I look at it, I always look at the. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't done that. But anyway, from from the uh, what has happened in the um, taxes, total taxes collected in the parish, the total taxes collected between 2004 and 2005, we had we had it four million dollars worth of taxes more that we collected. Uh, from 2005 to 2006, we we collected almost not, almost ten million dollars more in taxes, and from 2006 to 2007. We, in, we increased by $11 million in taxes. We've increased tremendously in the last few years. Now, what, what happened between those years is we reassessed commercial property, which was, you know, a huge increase. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we're expecting to see, you know, another in taxes. Right now, I think I'm looking at already $3 million worth of taxes already. And we haven't even put our reassessment in yet, you know. So, right, you know. constantly going. Yes, it is. Um, I don't look for that to stop just looking in the future right now for the next five years for sure. It's not just coming from residential, of course. By now we see a lot of increase in commercial, and not only in commercial building and land, but in businesses, inventory, equipment, things like that. And 10-year exemption taxes, y'all, we have some phenomenal numbers becoming taxable in the next five years. Phenomenal. One year alone, one billion dollars worth of equipment is going to become a taxable. You know, and so that generates a, we that I just did that today. That's going to generate a good, good a good bit of taxable value. But we'll get three percent. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you still get three percent yeah. of that. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Lore, I'm sorry. <laughs> that doesn't change. No. Yeah. Unless it, there's a new millage. Yeah. You know, voting on. But, uh, you know, please, once again, please, you know, I welcome you to call me about any, any, you know, once we get to this appeal process, if there's any questions, you know, um, I welcome any phone calls. Please just let me know. Great. All right. And then I will, after all the appeal process time is over, I will be coming back to the two y'all as my board reviewed to certify my tax roll. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I want to compliment Ms. LeBlanc, too, for doing such a good job. Absolutely. She must have gone to assessor school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Okay, and just one more comment on page two, uh, section four. The, to end this whole process, we have to issue a quietus. And we receive, the parish receives the annual uh, audit reports from the sheriff's uh, tax collector agency fund. And then once received, it's required by law that the treasurer of the parish government will issue a quietus to the assessor on behalf of all the taxing districts in the parish, which states that the sheriff, as you know, the tax collector for the parish, has exhibited satisfactory evidence that all taxes, all ad valorem taxes due, as shown on the ad valorem roll for Ascension Parish for the current year, have either been paid or accounted for. So that's the last step, and that happens you know, after you finish sitting at the board of review and the appeals process takes place. And that would be the last step in the process. So if you have any further questions, I too would like to thank the assessor for coming by and, and helping us uh, try to inform, the, all, especially all the new councilmen, and just to uh, give an update to the, to the existing councilmen that uh, the process you will have to go through and this will start. And of course, I think you, I sent out the schedule what we'd like to do is on uh, July 3rd meeting is present these two ordinances as an introduction and then the public hearing and uh, consideration of adoption would be at the second council meeting in July. So that's the schedule we're looking at right now. Great. Okay. Thank you. You want Thank to stay you. up next for the financial right. report? Sure.
Okay, the uh, next item we want to go over is the ordinance amending the uh, 2008 budget. This would be our first budget amendment. And um, you have, bef each of you have it in your packet, but you also have a recap on the uh, top of the official ordinance. So this is, this is just a recap of what's going on with your operating budget. Our budget right now is uh, for revenues and our operating budget only is 51.7 million. This budget minimum we're presenting tonight uh, will add three more million to the revenues of the budget. And that's mainly due to grants and legislative appropriations of 1.8 million, which, in, which is those two main ones. Uh, 1.8 million is our FEMA repetitive loss grant and 600,000 for the new grant for HUD as a result of uh, the hurricanes. So that brings our amended revenues to 54.8 million. The expenditures in our operating budget are currently at 54.4 million, and this uh, budget amendment adds 9.6 million more in, in uh, expenditures, and that's mainly due to the, the cash defeasance of the East Ascension drainage bond of 6.2 million, and of course, that new FEMA uh, grant that we were talking about is 1.8 million. So that brings our total adjusted uh, amended re uh, expenditures for our operating budget at 64 million. And then in our capital projects budget, the revenues were just uh, 2.8 million, and we're adding in this amendment 300,000, and that's mainly due to the reimbursement we expect to receive from the STAG grant, the first drawdown of the STAG grant of 264000 The expenditures in the capital budgets, uh, budget was currently $54.2 million. This amendment adds $1 million to the expenditures, and that mainly consists of 423000 for the jail construction project, 922000 for the new fire district number three station, and a decrease of 490000 for four di fire district number one's contract payments that were actually made in 07, but they didn't think that would happen. They budgeted it the, this amount in 08, so we're adjusting for that. So the amended expenditures in our capital project uh, budget is $55 million, $55.2 million. So briefly, if you look at the ordinance, uh, We'll first, we'll do the uh, operating budget. The general fund, they had some grants that came in from FEMA for the building code, 158000 for that new grant as a revenue. And then the fire districts, we wanted to decrease by 55000 this grant for the fire districts for funds received in 2007. And it was budgeted. It actually came in in 2007. It was budgeted in 2008. So we want to decrease that. And then, of course, the transfer in from the Section 8, there's an administrative fee that we're capturing. So we're going to transfer in from that HUD Section 8 grant fund $30,000 to the parish for administration fees, administrative fees. In the general fund, the expenditures and transfers out, uh, the appropriations and grants. That's for the, uh, to appropriate 150000 for a new FEMA grant, Uniform Commercial Code grant, and to increase by 15000 for what was not spent in 07 on the, that first grant of the uh, UCCI Building Code grant. Under appropriations and grants, uh, economic development, this is to increase by 30000 for the commissary lease, with, that's at Louisiana Edible Creations with uh, the Ascension Economic Development Corporation, and that's per council motion on April 3rd, 2008. And then we're transferring out to East Ascension Drainage, 75,000 for a contract with East Ascension Drainage for the monument uh, uh, project with the Corps of Engineers. The total project cost was 420,000. It was a cost sharing. The Corps paid, uh, put up 210,000 and the parish put up two. 110,000. The contract with that was actually between the Corps and East Ascension Drainage, but we're agreeing to reimburse East Ascension Drainage uh, 110,000. So 75,000 is coming out of uh, general fund, and uh, Road Bridge is putting up 35,000 that we're reimbursing East Ascension Drainage for. 
The next page on page two is the road and bridge fund. This is our maintenance fund. Grants again in revenues, 117,404. Keep America Beautiful grant, 15,000. Household Hazardous Materials Program grant, 42,000. And the LAGAP grant, that was for the uh, road signs that Mr. Turner had showed you, that grant uh, product, and that was 60,000. And the expenditures and transfers out is uh, the same thing for that grant. And then, of course, this is East Ascension share, I mean, road and bridges share of the, to reimbursement to East Ascension for that uh, core grant of 35000 East Ascension drainage fund revenues, um, they're, t they're transferring in, they're receiving the road and bridge appropriation and the general fund appropriation. And then their expenditures and transfers out on page three. They had professional services. They are increasing by 110,000. And that's uh, the same grant that we were talking about, that monument, monumental grant. And that's for the drainage for a motion of September the 10th. And all these motions I'm referring to, you, you have attached in the back of this ordinance in case you want to refresh your memory or view it. West Ascension Drainage, uh, they had some contract labor that was not budgeted, so we're appropriating 67000 from their fund balance uh, for the, to pay these uh, contract labor people. And then there was a motion made by the drainage, uh, by the council on April 17th to appropriate 20000 from their fund balance for culverts. We got a court order in the criminal court fund to appropriate 19000 from the fund balance for the purchase of new computers. And then in the health unit fund, mosquito control, uh, this was another adjustment from 2007 for that program, 9300 And in the mental health, professional services on page four, to provide a 10000 for the contract with the results group, and that was per council motion on March 13, 2008. Fire district number two, they also had a grant from FEMA, FEMA to appropriate 152000 and this is a new grant that was awarded, and of course they're going to spend it in the expenditures. Recreation, they got a grant for a recreational trail, and that, that was to appropriate a uh, $18,500 for this is a new grant awarded in 08 and $10,000 for the 2006 rec recreational trail grant revenue not received in 07 as budgeted in 07. And then the tr expenditures and recreation is to provide for the expenditures of those grants. Lamar Dixon revenues and transfers in. Uh, there was a state appropriation for uh, 75000 and they use that to purchase some uh, industrial fans for the non-air conditioned building and also to contribute 20000 to the LSU Ag Center livestock show held at Lamar Dixon. And of course the expenditures is to expend those revenues that they just received. And the only addition would be under professional services to increase 49000 that for the portion of the master plan grant that was not spent in 07 as it was budgeted. It actually was spent in 08. And then the next three funds are our sewer maintenance funds, and what we're doing here is closing out these funds and creating a new utilities department by council action. So this is the authority to close out all these utility funds and transfer all of their assets, liabilities, and fund balance as of January 1st to the newly created utilities department. So that's the three sewer systems. And then at the bottom of the page, the sinking fund for East Ascension, uh, that's receiving the $6.2 million to cash to fees, uh, to fees those bonds. And then the expenditures is actually to uh, pay the debt to cash to fees those bonds. So that's the $6.2 million and the uh, uh, cost of the bond issuance. HUD Section 8. That's to receive this new grant for 600000 for a disaster assistance program. And this is new money that came in from FEMA as a result of the hurricanes. And then the expenditures is actually to appropriate the expenses of that grant. 
and then as I just said in the general fund, this is when they were receiving it from this HUD Section 8, the 30,000 administration fees for that grant. Bottom of the page on 6, Fire District number 1, going to page 7, uh, they had a new grant also awarded to them for uh, 7700 and that's the revenue and the expenditure. And then the re FEMA Repetitive Loss uh, Reduction Acquisition uh, or Elevation Fund, they're receiving that 1.8 grant in, as revenues and expending it as their expenditures. Homeland Security.